after. Here's the ELDs. I'm getting used to them. I can certainly see the advantages to the things. It seemed to cut way down on my paperwork because the machine just did it all for you. Uh, I was less stressed because I knew, I knew that no matter what, I could only travel 11 hours. And that there was just, there's just no way around it. So you couldn't overwork yourself. You couldn't drive tired if you had to. So I got, I got used to them after a while and I got to like them. And, and something else I liked about uh, the electronic logs was um, that if the dispatcher tried to push you or coerce you, anything like that, all you needed to do was type in a message to the, to the, to the dispatch on your electronic logging device to get him to clarify what exactly it was that he was asking you to do. And if he was asking you to run over your hours, and most of the time that's exactly what he was asking you to do, you were asking him to reply in print, and those things kept a record of everything that was typed back and forth. So the dispatcher all of a sudden then would back off because he didn't want to put in print something that you could show the scale guy and go, look, I'm tired, and I want to stop, and this guy's shoving me. Or you could simply put in, you know, sometimes you couldn't do 11 hours a day. Sometimes you were just beat after nine or ten hours, the weather was terrible, you were tired from fighting with the traffic or whatever, you could park it early and you could send the dispatch a message and say, hey, I'm tired, I'm stopping now, or I don't feel well, I won't be up and running again in ten hours. You had more control over the situation because the dispatcher did not want to violate the law and then they have to put that in print, something that you could show the scale guy. So I got quite comfortable with it. Now, mind you, I couldn't make as many miles in a day as what I was used to doing running produce. So I had to approach the carrier and say, you know what, I'm, I'm doing less miles. You're going to have to pay me more money to make, those, make up for those lost miles. The carrier knew that everybody was in that position and they had to up the mileage rate and they had to up the hourly waiting time simply because they knew for a fact that you just couldn't make as much money on electronic logs as you could on paper logs. It was just the simple fact of the matter. You just you couldn't beat the things. You had to work within the law. They wanted you to work within the law because they'd get audited. So really, it was it was it was a tool to my advantage that I got used to used to having, and and it was it was really pretty nice. They couldn't push you. Uh, it really worked out well, and I found that for a guy that was used to running a lot more hours than eleven, I got used to knowing that you know I I was I felt like I was working for a union because I was stopping so early in the day. I was able to, I'd have my eleven hours in by supper time, so I could stop have a shower, have dinner, go to bed at a normal time and wake up when I felt good and rested, not when uh, my 11 hours was up, if I was feeling, or my 10 hours, I'm sorry, if I was feeling sick or something like that, I would just say, no, I type in, no, I don't, I don't feel good. I'll, I'll be up and running when I'm ready and not before. The weather's bad, I'm gonna sit and wait it out for a little while. And you're covered because the moment you put in that you're tired or the road conditions are bad or something like that, nobody's going to be able to push you anymore. So I, I really got to appreciate that. Now in today's real world, and the ELDs are coming, we all know that it's just a matter of time. Sooner or later, we'll all be working with these things. So uh, it, it's just, you. It's, it's a... It's a thing you might as well get used to and, and learn to take advantage of the advantages of this system. But frankly, the, the mileage rates and the pays are going to have to make up for the money that we're losing because we can't cover the same amount of miles. But I, I think uh, overall, once we get used to them, I think it's, it's going to be a good thing. It's certainly a, a tool that will cover your butt in an accident situation because it records... All sorts of stuff, you know, your speed, your RPM, your ex exactly the minute you hit the guy. You can show you were well-rested that day. 
there are definite advantages to these things. Yep, there are a few annoyances, like having them tap into your motor and being able to get a hold of you anytime they want. I wasn't used to that, but you know, you can you can see the point. But you can't respond on the things when you're when you're moving. You've got to pull over and stop. So I would just run until I was ready to stop. Then I was check my messages. So I really didn't find it an inconvenience at all. So long and the short of it is, I guess, I think they're going to come anyway. You may as well learn to take advantage of them and, and use them to your advantage. And they're going to keep everybody honest. The great big carriers already have them, and they want them. So they're, they're pushing everybody else to have them because they think we're all going to be on the same playing field with them then. Maybe we are and maybe we aren't, but the truth of the matter is the driver shortage is already demanding that the pay go up, and with these ELDs, that's certainly going to demand better rates than what we've been seeing the last 10 years because nobody's going to want to do it. it you, can't, you can't make the extra money that you used to running like a raped ape. You've got to run legally with these things, so in order for you to take home a decent paycheck after your fuel or whatever, the money's got to come from the company. Whether they like it or not, they're just going to have to have to pay you fairly. Now, I never explored the ELDs, uh, their capabilities particularly. I was, I was working with one that uh, was built by PeopleNet. But among other things, I know that they would rec it would record the mileage that you did every day. And this is, this is one of the big scams for carriers. They'll tell you that your load is you know, 500 miles away when really it's 600 miles away. So you go and do it. The ELD would show that the actual trip was 600 miles. So the carrier would try to pay you 500 and, sh and short you on the miles. And all you had to do was get, a, get the, to uh, pull up on the people net on the ELD, the mileage, the actual mileage that you'd done that day and go, no, no, no. That was 600 miles, not 500 miles. So, you know, you've got no argument here. The miles have been recorded. That's a pretty nice thing. <laughs> here's, here's a couple of comments. It's already proven by my driving history. It will not make me safer if it has zero safety or cost benefit. Nope. I, I'm with you on that. I, I'm, I'm the same way. I drove 40 years. I never had any accidents. I don't need to be babysat. But, hey, Tony. But, uh... Whether you like it or lump it, they're coming anyway, I'm afraid. And there's all sorts of guys that don't need to be monitored. Little Rock, having problems watching in their parking lot for 10 hours. You don't want to camp there for 10 hours with no food and no washroom and, and nothing else to do. You may as well get to a truck stop. That's the practical thing to do. So, yep, there are lots of problems with ELDs. And there's going to have to be more legislation and more rulemaking as to how to handle those situations because they're a flawed device. It's a flawed system. They're not perfect, so they're going to need to get the bugs out of it. But come hell or high water, we'll be getting these things. So they need to solve these problems, and they need to answer our questions on how to handle these situations because trucking's not black and white. Never was. There's always gray areas. There's always things that crop up that slow you down. So... The ELD has got to become more forgiving. I drive local. You think they will make us use them eventually? Good question. That's a good question. I, I haven't even thought of that. I can't, I can't answer that. But, but perhaps, but right now the local guys are restricted to like a certain radius and they just do a vehicle check. Good question. Hey, Dave from Maryland. So I guess we're going to have to wait and see. There's another gray area that you've brought up that has yet to be addressed. So interesting question. Good question. Uh, it's not only the LDs, it's also the shippers and receivers. There's a, that's Yes, absolutely there's a problem. And, and from the, uh, hey, Lefty, uh, from uh, the shippers and receivers point, they don't, a lot of them don't care about the hours of service. They just... They just want you there when they want you there at the other end. And it's the same thing um, with sales guys for these different companies or load brokers. They'll say, hey, well, you've got to be there in 10 hours. And something goes on along the route and 
you blow a tire or whatever, well, that's a legitimate excuse, and you run out of hours. So, you know, the shippers, the receivers, everyone's going to have to adapt and modify their system for these ELDs. I would just as well drive a pre-2000 truck. Well, there is that. You know, I read something the other day that says now that they figured out a way to monitor those 2000 and older trucks so they can run an ELD. I don't know if it was, if it was bull or not. I can't understand how they do it. But I did read something to that effect. And that's, you know, that's what all sorts of guys are doing is going to these older motors so they just can't have an ELD and get grandfathered out of it. It's a good idea, <laughs> frankly. I, I wish mine were a little bit older and then I could, I could claim that as well. But, uh, you know, all the hurdles we have to jump in this industry, it's just one more hurdle. But I don't think it's the worst one we'll come across. So not to worry. It'll all work out in the wash. I think I think you'll get to like them once you figure out how to work the advantages and work it work it to your benefit. And I think one of the biggest benefit is that they're just going to have to pay us more because we can't run as much. So if they want us to keep working, they're going to have to pay us more. I think if they discontinue the 14-hour rule, it might be okay. That 14-hour rule, I, I assume you're talking about Canada. And, you don't even want to get me started on Canadian regulations. I think they're all a bunch of, bunch of hook. I think I think Canada and the U.S. should be on the same system of regulation, and I think we should use the U.S. How do y'all from Arkansas, Joseph Tolley? But yeah, I, I I think we should all the Canadians should adapt the U.S. system. I think we should have a uniform system, right across the board, and that certainly would make things a whole lot easier for us as well. Well, <laughs> hell, if we're still kind of up in the air about it, oil field log, yeah, five hours off duty. See, and there's, there's another good point. If you're operating in the bush and you're not on the interstates, why are you held to these regulations? Because they don't really apply to you. In the, in the